welcome to Harlow on Healthcare. I'm David Harlow, and I invite you to join me by my virtual hearth as I sit down with healthcare leaders to discuss building the future of healthcare. Today, my guest is Andy Elner. He's the founder and CEO of Firefly Health. He was also the founding co-director of Harvard Medical School's Center for Primary Care, in addition to the institution's program in global primary care and social change. He holds an MD from Harvard Medical School and a master's from the London School of Economics. And while at Harvard, Andy created and directed several new courses and educational programs. And he still finds time to be a guest lecturer there and uh, work as a practicing primary care physician while at Firefly Health. Andy, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks, David. Great to be with you. So I wonder if you could give us a brief thumbnail sketch of Firefly Health and your journey with the company thus far. Uh, it's still early days, but uh, I know you've you've had some uh, funding come in and you are uh, operating already. Yeah, that's correct. So Firefly Health is a virtual first replacement for traditional primary care. We also replace most of people's urgent care, behavioral health needs, and a lot of the specialty care that they receive. There's three main components to what Firefly offers. The first is when you sign up for us, you get a a personal care team. So instead of just a primary care doctor that you might see once a year with us, you get a team that includes a great doctor, a nurse practitioner, a health coach, and on-demand access to a behavioral health team. And that team is available to you 24-7 and supporting you proactively and continuously. The the second component is technology. So we're uh, a technology company in addition to a service provider, and we build great technology that helps us to be uh, both incredibly responsive to people. So uh, over chat, we typically respond within five minutes. That's 75% of the time, uh, and certainly within 30 minutes, which is closer to 90% of the time. And the technology helps us to be responsive. It also helps us to support people in personalized and proactive ways. So we keep track of health goals that they have. Uh, we check in with them regularly. We uh, we help support them with tools that might help with goals like losing weight, sleeping better, managing depression, things like that. The last major component of our offering is a is a network. So while we replace a, a lot of care with this continuous virtual offering, when people do need something in person, whether it's uh, a, an imaging test like an x-ray uh, or some type of medical procedure, we curate a network of the best uh, specialist, urgent care facilities, uh, and other types of service providers within a given uh, geographic area and help make it really easy for people to to navigate to those places when they need care. So that's a basic overview of Firefly. We are value-based in the sense that we are taking more and more risk on the total cost of care over time and uh, are able to leverage this sort of deep, continuous engagement and this great network uh, that we can navigate people around to drive down the cost of care while delivering uh, much better experience and health outcomes uh, to, to people. Let's see, so just an update on where we are as a business. David, you alluded to uh, that we raised a, a, a Series A from uh, two great venture capital firms, F Prime and Oak HCFT. That was uh, about a year ago. Uh, at this point, we are live with our full primary care replacement service in Massachusetts. And uh, in the next sort of 60 to 90 days, we'll be live in all of New England uh, with a few states soon to follow with that sort of full replacement primary care offering. We also, in the context of COVID, have developed an offering responding to a lot of demand we were hearing from employers that helps to support them to, uh, to have their employees safely return to work. Andy, is that more of a uh, an employer focused service rather than a straight healthcare service, so to speak, reimbursed by traditional payers? Correct, David. That's a that's a service 
uh, for which employers contract with us directly. And uh, for that service, we're now live in, in uh, 10 states, uh, including Massachusetts. Right. So uh, throughout the sort of COVID pandemic and crisis in, in this country, we've seen a tremendous uptick in telehealth services and telehealth reimbursement and sort of openness to reimbursement during the crisis. As things have gotten a little bit better, though, you know, things may still get worse, who knows. But as things have gotten a little bit better, there's there's sort of a retrenchment. And I think in some quarters, there's a move away from telehealth and some providers and some payers who are looking to have a return to the office, so to speak. And the changes that were made in reimbursement, certainly at the government level, are all sort of uh, tied to the emergency declarations and so forth. I know there's interest at CMS in sort of rolling this change forward into more general application. Are, Are you seeing that happen among the payers that you contract with? And and how does the coverage part of the equation relate to the service part of the equation that you're offering? Yeah, yeah. So we are seeing increased interest. We both contract with payers and directly with employers. And I think there's a lot of demand coming from, you know, uh, people <laughs> and how they access care and, the, and those who pay for the care that they receive for more of a virtual uh, option and offering. Two issues here, David, uh, which I know you're aware of. The first is what we see as kind of an incremental step, which is paying uh, equivalent or, you know, sort of telehealth parity. So equivalent fee-for-service payments for video or telephonic visits uh, that replace in-person visits. Uh, and we're certainly seeing right now continued commitment to that, uh, at least in the in the New England region. Um, but for Firefly, because our service is built to be continuous and proactive, and we actually provide a, a lot of care, the majority of care outside the context of more episodic visits through things like chat uh, and engagement with our technology platform, uh, you know, we're really partnering with payers and employers to move out of fee-for-service completely uh, and into some form of uh, capitation, you know, with incentives related to outcomes. And, you know, I'd say uh, for us, that's, it feels particularly important uh, that payments move in that direction to enable the type of more um, radical improvements in experience outcomes and costs that are possible. Right. Ooh, capitation. I haven't heard anyone say that word out loud in a long time. You <laughs> talked about value-based care earlier, and I guess that's code yep. for capitation or something related to capitation. But that sort of brings to mind some of you know some other aspects of of uh, your history and your affiliation. I'm just curious if you could mm-hmm. speak to this a little bit. Some of what you're describing is something that we used to call patient centered medical home. And I'm wondering <laughs> if you could speak to that as well, because I know you're, uh, you, you are, you have been connected with the primary care collaborative and uh, you know, wonder what you have to say about that. And, and how do we talk about the patient centered medical home and capitation without turning people off? Those are great questions, David. So yeah, you were, you're referring to, I, you know, I spent a decade in the a traditional academic primary care community at, at Harvard and, you know, certainly come from that background. Uh, you know, what, what I'd say is a couple of things. One is, yeah, I sort of hear that, you know, capitation, uh, you know, we can use different code words for it uh, <laughs> if, if they're more in, in fashion, <laughs> right. um, you know, but I use the term, you know, for, for, you know, broadly speaking, Speaking to you know refer to just a fixed payment uh, per month, uh, you know with, with with some level of of risk uh, uh, related to you know the services that are that are offered, uh, and I, I I'm sure you you heard it that way as well. Um, you know I think to connect it to this patient-centered medical home movement, 
you know, the way I'd say it is, I think that like sort of um, paying for care virtually, the patient center medical home was, it's sort of an incremental uh, step towards what I think is a more radical and frankly compelling vision that takes us back to the roots of primary care. What's great about the patient center medical home movement is the focus on population health and uh, having teams and not just a doctor and, um, you know, moving in the direction of being proactive. I I still associate that concept with a pretty sort of traditional primary care. You have a clinic, people go to the clinic and, you know, the home is sort of that, that physical place that's a traditional primary care office that's doing uh, more advanced things. What we're working on with Firefly and where I think the real opportunity is, is to is to get out of those boxes of primary care versus specialty care versus behavioral health and offer a service that's more comprehensive. It covers a lot of things that, you know, traditionally were referred out to specialists and it provides a service in people's homes, leveraging technology, you know, new, newer service lines uh, that go to people in the home rather than having them go to a physical clinic. And in that world, um, you know, I think we need to move away from, you know, just paying for primary care as a separate thing or trying to force primary care to be part of an integrated delivery network that's dominated by hospitals. And there's really an opportunity for primary care to, to drive and, you know, be at full risk. Uh, and we actually see ourselves at Firefly ultimately partnering with others, being a purchaser of downstream care. Uh, that's delivered in new ways and bundles and things like that. So I'd say it's just a much more radical approach than um, uh, the patient center medical home movement. If you're just tuning in, this is Harlow on Healthcare, coming to you on Healthcare Now Radio. I'm David Harlow, and my guest today is Andy Elner, CEO of Firefly Health. Andy, it sounds like we're talking about a comprehensive set of services, managing all sorts of conditions, not just primary care, as you describe. And I guess the question is, how can we do this virtually? Sort of the virtual patient encounter has traditionally, if I can, if I can say traditional yeah. about virtual care, has traditionally yeah. been you know, episodic, you know, complaint-based. Yeah. And how does that translate into chronic care, uh, sort of a more holistic care, which, which is the concept that you described at the top? Yeah. So David, there's, there's, it turns out that there's just incredible opportunities that open up when you step outside of organizing care around visits to an office, or even as most sort of telehealth offerings currently do, organizing care around video visits with, uh, you know, a doctor, a nurse practitioner, and many of those services are you know, they're not continuous, they're not primary care, it's uh, more urgent and episodic. Uh, what we do at Firefly is replace that traditional primary care or sort of doctor-centric model of care with uh, something that's continuous, it's personalized, proactive, so people have uh, a team uh, that they can access over an app on their phone. The team uh, supports them on a regular basis, so most people are interacting with us, um, 60% of people are interacting with with us on a monthly basis of our, of our patients, 25% on a weekly basis. So sort of a big shift from that idea of the annual physical that a lot of people tend to miss. So we're interacting with you much more frequently. We're working with you to understand what your goals are, uh, to be healthy. And for a lot of people that's losing weight, it's sleeping better. Uh, It's dealing with stress, uh, and we're doing that in a way that's integrated with helping you manage any chronic conditions that you have. Uh, And so there, you know, most people with high blood pressure now have a blood pressure cuff at home. Uh, There's lots of ways that we can get the types of data we need to support people to work towards uh, the goals related to their chronic conditions. And then uh, people do need in-person services at times. Uh, A lot of that is for diagnostics. And so at Firefly, we build partnerships with urgent care facilities and make it really easy for people to navigate to those. We we sort of um, are working on being able to video in during an an encounter in urgent care 
Uh, we expect soon to be able to also send uh, a medic to, to people's home to you know get things like vital signs uh, and other point of care tests. And so um, by stepping outside of you know care is people go to see a doctor. Primary care is you know you go once a year. Um, we're actually able to uh, I would say augment the things that people really value about primary care, which is the relationship with great doctors and care teams. Uh, and we're able to support them on a much more frequent, uh, proactive basis to, to work towards any chronic conditions uh, that people have. And then we can integrate much more. So we have behavioral health providers on our teams uh, backed up by psychiatrists, and we manage the vast majority of, of mental illness uh, as part of this continuous integrated service, rather than referring out to a separate psych psychiatrist or uh, other service. Uh, so there's just a lot of opportunities when you step outside of that um, visit-based paradigm. Right. You you mentioned uh, the relationship question, which was something that I wanted to to get to. And many people have a longstanding relationship with their primary care physician. I just got a letter from mine who said he's retiring. I have to find another yeah. one. Pain in the neck. You're not alone. We're having. <laughs> I mean, there's certainly a lot of folks place. retiring yeah. these days for yeah. a variety of yeah. reasons. But um, uh, it reminds me of a of an old uh, uh, Roz Chast uh, cartoon in the New Yorker, sort of the, the the three ages of man. Your doctor is older than you. Your doctor is the same <laughs> age as you. Your doctor is younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh that's 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 what happens. And we need to we need to yeah. maintain those relationships. And I'm wondering how that works in a virtual centric paradigm. Yeah, that was really something, you know, when I decided to take the leap from being a traditional primary care doctor and academic to starting this company, that was one of the core questions that that I was focused on. You know, a lot of my work at Harvard, uh, my research had led me to the conclusion that the relationship is actually really central uh, to things that create value in healthcare, both people, patients, uh, people value that relationship, but it also, you know, primary care helps us help people make smart decisions about uh, how they get the rest of their care in ways that can, you know, as you know, David, eliminate a lot of unnecessary cost and duplication, uh, things like that. So the relationship is central. And Firefly really built not just out of my kind of decade uh, as a researcher or academic, but also my experience as a primary care doctor, um, where, you know, when I started practicing, it was pretty uh, anathema for people to give out their email address uh, to their patients, but I, I that was ridiculous. And so, you know, really for, for the decade before I kind of took the leap and started Firefly, I had been doing a lot of, you know, what we're able to do. Uh, on our technology platform, which is just, you know, wow, like when you have that relationship with people, uh, you have this comprehensive understanding of their health and their context. It's so much easier and more efficient. You know, someone has a quick question, uh, they have a new symptom to be able to just, um, you know, now at Firefly, we do it over chat. I used to do it over email. Um, but, you know, in Firefly, now we do it real time, uh, usually respond within five minutes, as I said. And you can just um, work up a lot of things really quickly. Um, and people love it um, once they realize that they can sort of have that relationship. They can have the, their cake and eat it too. They can, you know, once they do that first sort of video visit with their doctor or nurse practitioner um, and then experience that they can send us a chat message and get a response almost immediately. Uh, and then, you know, when they have a sickness episode, and we're following up with them proactively, we're checking in with them, um, they start to realize what has felt really special to me about what we've built, which is actually technology can strengthen relationships. If it's designed in the right way, if it's part of a really fundamentally different approach to care um, that allows uh, the teams of providers to organize their work around um, supporting better outcomes and experience for patients rather than just driving visits over and over again. So that's what's been really cool is discovering that 
you know, with a with a pretty fundamentally different approach to care and great technology tools, we can offer something that actually strengthens the relationship. And I think that's a big part of why uh, we're so sticky for for the for the uh, members who who sign up for us and experience it. Great. And 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 what about the provider experience? Uh, I know you you've been involved obviously in designing it as well as experiencing it, but uh, in yeah. others who have come on board. You know what's the yeah. what's the feedback thus far? Oh, it's like such a joy, <laughs> David. I had spent you know sort of a decade in again sort of traditional care and academia. You know the 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 center that that I was fortunate to help to to build at Harvard. I, it's not an exaggeration to say that, as you know, all physicians are incredibly burned out. You know, it's sort of around fifty percent report symptoms of burnout. Uh, and you know, the really disturbing thing is sort of upwards of kind of 10 to 15% of people report, you know, thinking about suicide. So Mm -hmm. it's a real problem. The rates are higher for primary care physicians, as you know, than, than other types of providers. And a lot of what's driving that burnout is, um, you know, the job is just broken. Uh, and you know, we want, we don't need to sort of go through all the causes of that, but people are spending 90 to 95% of their time doing more rote administrative tasks, documenting things in the medical record, um, things that you don't need to be a physician to do. And the, you know, that sort of 5% that, um, is really why we all signed up to be physicians. You can boil it down to two things, making complex decisions about diagnosis and and treatment, number one, and number two, having relationships with people and their families at critical moments in their life. So what we've done at Firefly is really boiled down the work that clinicians do so that they're spending close to 100% of their time on that 5%. We built technology so that we're in the process of communicating with patients, providing care, providing support, a lot of the documentation happens uh, as a matter of course, so you don't have to sort of go away and, and separately, you know, document things in the in the medical record. And because we're working in teams and the technology supports us to do that, you know, we have physicians focusing on uh, really complex patients and workups. We have nurse practitioners uh, providing um, all of routine primary care, which they're exceptionally good at. We have health coaches that are supporting people around behavior change. And so, you know, it is one of these same concepts that we talked about in the patient-centered medical home, um, but really required sort of breaking out of the structures of visits uh, and clinics um, and building better technology to fully achieve them. And so, you know, our, our, our providers, it's just so much fun to get back to, you know, those things that drive joy. The last thing I'll say, and again, you know, if you sort of understand the drivers of cost in healthcare, everything I just said is how you eliminate a lot of kind of wasteful or um, uh, unnecessary cost. The next thing that allows you to do that is to, you know, rather than having this traditional approach in primary care where, you know, we're we're sort of seen as the gatekeeper, preventing people from visits to specialists, uh, but then we don't have enough time to actually do anything. So if someone's sick in a complex way, we refer them out to a bunch of different people. By moving the service to this continuous virtual offering, we're able to create much more sort of digital or virtual collaboration with specialists that doesn't require a separate visit, but also allows the primary care clinician to not sort of pass along the complex patient, but really participate very actively in their, in their care, collaborating with specialists virtually. And that, yeah. that, that just mm-hmm. feels, it's, it's really joyful. Nice. So a- Andy, many of our listeners are familiar with your executive chairman. I wonder if you could say a few <laughs> words about what he, brings to the, what he brings to the table and what it's like to work with Jonathan Bush. Uh, so Jonathan is just a, he's a wonderful visionary. Um, so I, I think everyone's familiar, but he's a, he was the founder and CEO of a female health for about 20 years. And he just brings unparalleled understanding of both, you know, the business of healthcare and the technology associated 
with you know this transition to a value-based approach and out of a visit-based approach. So, you know, I there's literally, in my opinion, not not a not a person on the planet um, who has sort of deeper understanding or um, or more vision related to to those things. Uh, so it's a it's it's a wonderful privilege to be able to to partner with him on Firefly, and you know he also just brings the sort of I, you know as a, as we talked about I I'm a you know I come from a sort of stodgy I call myself a recovering academic I you uh -huh. know, spent a long time at Harvard in traditional academics traditional healthcare you know it's a really different um, sort of culture environment um, approach to organization to build a startup, you know, a venture backed metrics driven startup. And, you know, Jonathan just brings incredible experience and, and drive, you know, he's, he's pushing us, he's making us uncomfortable. Um, he's, you know, really pushing the envelope on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, it, it's just a tremendous opportunity for me uh, and, and for Firefly to have him uh, on the team. So Andy, to wrap up, if you were to wake up tomorrow and find yourself five years in the future, What's one thing in healthcare that you would hope or expect to find has changed drastically? So, David, I think in some ways it's a back to the future moment in that, you know, 50, 60 years ago, we had the sort of family physician who came to your home. Maybe it was longer than that at this point. Um, that's the thing that I think will, uh, will change in the next five years. I don't think people are going to go to clinics or, or even in many cases, hospitals for, for much of care. I think it's going to it's going to come to us in our home over technology uh, and through new service lines in a way that you know supports us much more to be healthy, um, helps us waste a lot of less time and money um, going, you know, sort of bouncing around for unnecessary visits around the system. Thank you, Andy. It's been a pleasure. Uh, absolutely, David. I had a lot of fun. I hope uh, hope I can update you sometime on uh, on how things are going. Great. You have been listening to Harlow on Healthcare. Join us at healthcarenowradio.com. Let's continue the conversation on building the future of healthcare together at hashtag Harlow on HC. I'm David Harlow, keeping the fire going and holding a seat open for you. Until next time. <laughs>